relationships to which I can be engaged or not. I have been in this call. I'm uh, I'm an ordained pastor with the Lutheran Church, and I I was just having a conversation in the back with Rachel, and we were talking about what age one might go to school. And I started my undergraduate degree when I was 38, and I started at seminary when I was 45 years old. So. I want you to know that there's a lot of opportunities, and age isn't necessarily a barrier for any of that. So today we're going to talk about relationships, and you know, if we think about it, when, you, when we're talking about our Christian faith and scripture, this is all about relationship, isn't it? It's about God's love for us, God's love for the world, and our love for each other. And so, no matter who we are, we're engaged in relationship. So, as I think about framing our conversation today, I was hoping that you would read this scripture with me. So if we could read it together out loud. But now, Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid. For I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. You are precious to me. You are honored, and I love you. You are honored, and God loves you. And so as I think about these relationships that we are involved in through all of our lives, there are those that are the relationships that are part of just who we are because you've been in, you've been in a family, whether it's a biological family or an adoptive family, whether it's aunts and uncles or grandmas and grandpas, whether you're at school, whether it's your neighbors, we're all in relationships. And they don't always look like this, do they? Sometimes the relationships can look a little like, like this. Yeah? So uh, today I want to talk about, this is a pretty big subject, but I want to talk about our day-to-day -day relationships, the ones in which we're engaged with each day. And I've heard that there are two kinds of people in the world. Those who do not have enough love and those who have enough love. So my question to you this morning is, let's just kind of unpack that a little bit. What would it look like if you didn't have enough love? What kind of person would you think we might see? Okay, so if you didn't have enough love, you can, for those of you who might not have heard on this side of the room, you might act out and try and get attention from others. How else might you, what we, what else might we see if you didn't have enough love? Pardon me? Maybe like hard for other people. Hard or cold? Sad and depressed could certainly be one of those. So you get the picture, people who don't have enough love aren't operating out of a place inside of themselves that's confident and can be loving to others. So what would it be like to have enough love? Happy, okay. Loving toward others? Pardon me? Giving. Compassionate. Okay, so again, you have the picture. So then I want to go and make a step further that I believe that you are shaped by those who refuse to love you or who are unable to love you and by those who love you. And I would, I'm going to ask you to participate in this next section. So I want you to be thinking about this, about how we're shaped by those who do not love us and those who do love us. Let me give you an example. I, in case you didn't notice, I'm a female. And when I was growing up, I was told that their women are not ordained. 
women couldn't be preachers. And so there was already this whole sense of being female meant that I was going to be treated differently. And how that shaped me was, is it made me want to work a little harder, but it also made me a little resentful. Why was it that men could do those things? Why was it that women were allocated to certain roles? So by those who refused to love me, or those who, or those who were unable to love me, that's, I was shaped in that way, that I felt like I always had to work just a little bit harder than anyone else did. When I think about we're also shaped by those who love you or who love me, I think about when I was growing up, my parents didn't have high school diplomas. My mom got a GED when I was in, she was start studying for her GED when I was in high school. And so to think about graduating from high school was, I could, I could imagine that, but I could not imagine going to college. I, it wasn't even on my radar screen of how that would happen because no one in my family, none of my aunts or uncles, my grandma, my grandpa had ever been to college. And so it was the people who loved me from my church and some friends of mine through the years that kept saying, you can do it, you can go to school. And that shaped me by giving me confidence and courage and the hope that maybe I could go to school one day. So this is what I'm saying is when we talk about the difference of, it's one thing when we name what some of those things are, like let's say the situation of the people who didn't love you, but how did it shape you? You see the difference? How, how, how are you reacting to whatever that situation is? And this is where I'm going to ask you to help. You're going to get into groups of three as soon as I give the word. And what I'd like you to do is talk with each other I'm going to give, I'll tell you when 60 seconds are up, I'll, I'll just say 60 seconds switch. And what I'd like you to do is name a person or a situation in your life where you felt loved, where you felt love was refused to you, and how did that shape you? So name the situation, but more importantly, how did it shape you? And how are you the person you are today because of that? And then when every, there's three people and you've gone around, we go to the second question, when you were loved, how did that shape you? How are you the leader you are today or that you are becoming because of, these, because of the relationships? So get into groups of three. I'd like you just to turn your chair so you don't get up and walk around the room, but turn toward each other and who God has created you to be. The first place that I'd like you to go back to is that Isaiah passage. to remember that God has called you by name, that you are God's, that you are honored, and that you've got, you are precious, precious in God's sight, because when you know and can claim that love, when you believe and live into that love, it allows you, it allows you to claim who you've been uniquely created to be by God. And then to go even a step further, and I think that as we know we're loved, we can love others. And we know this from, I think about the whole, the, whole, the whole scriptures are about God's love and God's being in relationship with us. But when I think about the life of Jesus Christ, what did Jesus do? Jesus came and right, would be with people, would speak the language that they spoke. If you were a fisherman, Jesus was speaking fisherman language. Come, I will make you fishers of men. In fact, when I go back and think about uh, all of those interactions that Jesus had with men, with women, with Gentiles, with the, with the Pharisees, the Sadducees. He always spoke the language. But once they knew this love, once he interacted and they knew they were loved, they could go out and be the leaders that Jesus had created, that God had created them to be. On Monday you were talking about theology. And so I'm going to throw out a piece of theology, of Lutheran theology, and it's called the sweet swap. It's also called the happy marriage. That when we know Jesus' love, and especially we know that through baptism, we know that through reading scripture, we know that through interactions with each other, that Jesus comes to us and gives us Jesus' glory, Jesus' goodness, kindness, wholeness, Jesus' grace, and Jesus takes on our sin. 
The more we spend time with Jesus, the more we're in relationship with Jesus, Jesus is reflected in our lives. And so this is this piece about how we're called to be in relationship with each other. And part of it is being grounded and knowing that who you are and that God has uniquely created you to be you. As you know that, you can let other people be who they are as well. And so today, as we uh, kind of come to this end of this devotion, I wanted to share a story about uh, my granddaughter and my husband. Naima is, uh, was when, ever since she's been born, my, my husband would say to Naima, Honeypot, do you know that I love you? And after about three years of hearing that, she said to him, Pops, why do you always tell me that you love me? And he said, because I always want you to remember this. And she said, yeah, but I will remember. And so he said, well, then let's, they've struck up a little deal. He would say, Honeypot, do you know? And she would say, that you love me? And he'd say, yeah. Well, the more that that happened, she'd say, Honeypot, do you know? Because the first time she wasn't sure that was the right answer to the question. Honeypot, do you know and that you love me? But then she got worse. That you love me. That you love me. And now, my, uh, my husband died about two months ago. And um, to this day, if we say to Naima, in the last couple of weeks we've said, Naima, do you remember that pops? And she said, loves me. Mm. And I think that that's exactly what we need to do with each other. That every day, each and every day, God is coming to us and through Jesus Christ says, I love you. And we need to not only say that and be reminded of it for ourselves, we need to remind each other. And so just turn to the person next to you and say, do you know that God and your response will be, loves me? Do you know that God loves me? Let's pray. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of relationship. We thank you for the people in this room, this, this class, these students, and the people who have loved them and shaped them so that they might be, that they might be used for your glory, that they might live fully in this life. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for those people who have not loved and when we've been the people who have not loved others continue to shape us mold us so that we might not only believe that we're holy precious and named by you but that we are all holy and precious and named by you as well bless our work today and these relationships that continue to grow in jesus name amen amen and who God has created you to be. The first place that I'd like you to go back to is that Isaiah passage. To remember that God has called you by name, that you are God's, that you are honored, and that you've got, you are precious, precious in God's sight, because when you know and can claim that love, when you believe and live into that love, it allows you, it allows you to claim who you've been uniquely created to be by God. And then to go even a step further, and I think that as we know we're loved, we can love others. And we know this from, I think about the whole, the whole, the whole scriptures are about God's love and God's being in relationship with us. But when I think about the life of Jesus Christ, what did Jesus do? Jesus came and right would be with people, would speak the language that they spoke. If you were a fisherman, Jesus was speaking fisherman language. Come, I will make you fishers of men. In fact, when I go back and think about uh, all of those interactions that Jesus had with men, with women, with Gentiles, with the, with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, he always spoke the language. But once they knew this love, once he interacted and they knew they were loved, they could go out and be the leaders that Jesus had created, that God had created them to be. On Monday, you were talking about theology. And so I'm going to throw out a piece of theology, of Lutheran theology, and it's called the sweet swap. It's 
It's also called the happy marriage. That when we know Jesus' love, and especially we know that through baptism, we know that through reading scripture, we know that through interactions with each other, that Jesus comes to us and gives us Jesus' glory, Jesus' goodness, kindness, wholeness, Jesus' grace, and Jesus takes on our sin. The more we spend time with Jesus, the more we're in relationship with Jesus, Jesus is reflected in our lives. And so this is this piece about how we're called to be in relationship with each other. And part of it is being grounded and knowing that who you are and that God has uniquely created you to be you. As you know that, you can let other people be who they are as well. And so today, as we uh, kind of come to this end of this devotion, I wanted to share a story about uh, my granddaughter and my husband. Naima is, uh, was when, ever since she's been born, my, my husband would say to Naima, Honeypot, do you know that I love you? And after about three years of hearing that, she said to him, Pops, why do you always tell me that you love me? And he said, because I always want you to remember this. And she said, yeah, but I will remember. And so he said, well, then let's, they've struck up a little deal. He would say, Honeypot, do you know? And she would say, that you love me? And he'd say, yeah. Well, the more that that happened, she'd say, Honeypot, do you know? Because the first time she wasn't sure that was the right answer to the question. Honeypot, do you know and that you love me? But then she got worse, that you love me, that you love me. And now, my, uh, my husband died about two months ago. And, um, to this day, if we say to Naima, in the last couple of weeks, we've said, Naima, do you remember that pops? And she said, loves me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's exactly what we need to do with each other. That every day, each and every day, God is coming to us and through Jesus Christ says, I love you. And we need to not only say that and be reminded of it for ourselves, we need to remind each other. And so just turn to the person next to you and say, do you know that God and your response will be loves me? Do you know that God Let's pray. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of relationship. We thank you for the people in this room, this this class, these students, and the people who have loved them and shaped them so that they might be, that they might be used for your glory, that they might live fully in this life. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for those people who have not loved, and when we've been the people who have not loved others. Continue to shape us, mold us, so that we might not only believe that we're holy, precious, and named by you, but that we are all holy and precious and named by you as well. Bless our work today and these relationships that continue to grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.